Is hiring any attorney a major mistake? This legal evidence is presented for you to make up your own mind. This is not legal advice and is provided for educational purposes only. Before you hire an attorney or talk to your existing attorneys, please pay attention to this evidence of how attorneys relate to us and what that means. You may even think to ask them about this and why they didn't explain this to you. I mean, ignorance of the law is no excuse after all. And remember, attorneys do not represent us, they represent a representation of us called a legal presence, a straw man. It's like a Monopoly game piece that represents the player. The attorney would represent the game piece, but not you, the player. And the game piece has no natural rights. They are entirely made up fictions that attorneys call persons. First we ask, to what or whom is an attorney's first duty? We consult the Corpus Juris Secundum, CJS, Legal Encyclopedia, Volume 7, Section 4, Attorney and Client, providing, quote, His first duty is to the courts and the public, not to the client. And wherever the duties to his client conflict with those he owes as an officer of the court in the administration of justice, the former must yield to the latter, end quote. The public is another name for the people, who is represented by the prosecution. All attorneys' first duty is to the state prosecution and colorable justice by law, not their own clients. 2. What is the legal relationship between an attorney and his or her client? CSJ subsection 2-3 Attorney and Client provides, quote, a client is one who applies to a lawyer or counselor for advice and direction in a question of law. Clients are also called wards of the court in regards to their relationship with their attorneys." End quote. We are colorable legal fictional wards of the court in regards to officers of the court who are administrative in nature and not judicial as propagandized. This is done under golden yellow fringed flags in every court. 3. What are courts with golden yellow fringe flags? The definition of the golden yellow fringe ornamentation on flags is found in the Army Regulations 840-10, titled Flags, Guidance, Streamers, Tabards, and Automobile and Aircraft Plates, Section 2-3, provides Quote B. National flags listed below are for indoor display and for use in ceremonies and parades. For these purposes, the flag of the United States will be of rayon banner cloth and heavyweight nylon trimmed on three sides with golden yellow fringe, two and a half inches wide. And C. The flag of the United States is authorized for indoor display for each 1. Office, headquarters, and organization authorized a positional color distinguishing flag or organizational color and 4. Military courtrooms. End quote. By Army Regulation 840-10, a golden yellow fringe on a flag specifically means military, as this is where it is defined. When courts use such a flag, the Army Regulation designates them as being law of war military courtrooms rather than constitutional law of peace courts. 4. What is a ward of the court? Quote, wards of court are infants and persons of unsound mind placed by the court under the care of a guardian. From Davis Committee v. Loney, 290 Kentucky 644, see Guardianship. End quote. Hiring an attorney places the juristic legal artificial person, being of unsound mind and presumed to be us, under the guardianship of the officers of the military courtroom. Are you an infant or a legal person of unsound mind? Are you a legal presence artificial person without natural rights? 5. Do we need to challenge the jurisdiction of these soft military courtrooms posing as local courts? Please take in the following, particularly because if pleading by an attorney. Quote, in propria persona, in one's own proper person. It was formerly a rule in pleading that pleas to the jurisdiction of the court must be plead in propria persona, because if pleading by attorney, they admit the jurisdiction, as an attorney is an officer of the court, and he is presumed to plead after having obtained leave, which admits the jurisdiction. See pro se, end quote. Pleading by an attorney admits and consents to the colorable fictitious jurisdiction and authority of these soft military courtrooms that lack all substance. 6. How do we challenge jurisdiction without appearing or manifesting as a legal presence artificial person? Black's Law Dictionary, Edition 8, 
page 107 provides special appearance to mean, quote, one, a defendant's pleading that either claims that the court lacks personal jurisdiction over the defendant or objects to improper service of process. And two, a defendant's showing up in court for the sole purpose of contesting the court's assertion of personal jurisdiction over the defendant. Special appearances have been abolished in federal court, end quote. In context, to me, this means that when the legal fictional judge asks for my name, I would not just say my name in making a regular normal appearance because that admits jurisdiction. I would say, quote, I am making a special appearance as the attorney in fact in propria persona for blank, the legal name, and you may refer to me as blank, my first name or world citizen P number. I am challenging your jurisdiction and authority over a living man without pleading. You are unlawfully conflating me, attorney in fact, agent in propria persona, with the legal incorporated person that is my principal." End quote. I do not know how things would proceed from there, but this is information I wish attorneys had given me when I asked them for it. Be warned though, attorneys and courtrooms have fraudulently treated such proper legal distinction between the legal presence artificial person versus the living man or woman as mental incompetency of the legal presence. This has resulted in unlawful court-ordered mental torture by state psychiatrists with psychiatric drugs in treating proper legal knowledge and expression thereof as a mental disease. Apparently, only licensed attorneys are allowed to know and express certain legal concepts. This kind of weaponization of law is called lawfare and goes hand in hand with such weaponization of psychiatry and medicine by the state, particularly to gain jurisdiction where none is had. Conclusions of Law First, when we hire an attorney, we become legally incompetent wards of the courtroom, third-class citizens of unsound mind, under guardianship of officers of the courtroom, and we admit to the law of war fictional jurisdiction of the courtroom in the matter at hand. With this status, there are no constitutional protected rights, particularly in these soft military courtrooms. In my personal experience, this is how courtrooms act and how attorneys treat us. Second, we can't hire an attorney if we want to challenge the fictitious colorable jurisdiction of the courtroom. We can't even be assigned standby counsel. Assigning standby counsel is an underhanded way for the colorable judge to gain consent to jurisdiction that is being challenged. Third, if we want to challenge jurisdiction, the specific way is as sui juris or in propria persona. Fourth, we have to make a special appearance to challenge jurisdiction in state courtrooms. I suggest looking at the Foreign Sovereign Immunity Act to challenge federal U.S. jurisdiction alongside with the attorney-in-fact authorized representative separation from the legal presence artificial person. This distinction between living men and women versus the legal presence artificial person, with the living serving as the authorized representative of the fictional, is found in Uniform Commercial Code Section 3-402b1. This distinction can also be secured with a statutory general durable power of attorney over the birth certificate legal presence artificial person, particularly with your own non-legal identity papers to identify you as the attorney-in-fact authorized representative. Also see the 11th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution if you believe these soft military courtrooms posing as our local courts abide by the constitutions and you understand that living men and women without legal presence are foreign to the juristic legal person governmental corporate slavery system. Knowing all this, would you hire an attorney? Answer in the comments below. Thank you for your attention and focus. Here are some other videos that may interest you. Click to continue the transmission. Like, subscribe, notify, and share.